G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and this week's edition of my weekly tips. Oh, I don't know why. I don't know why tipping is so hard. It's really causing me to have second thoughts about having all my tips on display because I am doing shit. But nonetheless, we'll crack on because eventually I'm gonna storm from behind and win the competition. It's, it's gonna happen, all right? So without further ado, straight into it with Sydney versus Melbourne at the SCG. Now last week we saw the Swans had a pretty gritty win over the Blues over at Marvel Stadium. They went into the game winless, so it was more or less a must win for the Swans, but they were probably the beneficiary of a bit of inexperience from Carlton and some wastefulness for sure. We saw Heaney return to what's probably his best with four goals and 26 possessions, but the win did come at a cost for the Swans with Hayward brutally breaking his jaw and McVeigh looks to have done a quad injury as well. The Demons on the other hand, as I've talked about before, go into this game 0-3 and three and look totally out of sorts. Their side is absolutely stacked with talent, but they look bereft of fitness and confidence. It's not their only problem at the moment, but I wonder if their midfield is a little bit too offensively oriented. They're stacked with so much talent, but they don't really have an enforcer in there, someone like a Levi Greenwood or a Mark Hutchings for West Coast. Like I said though, they've got bigger problems at the moment and they, and they probably just need their confidence back and start playing cohesively. Now the Swans have won the last eight encounters between these two sides. I think it was 2010 the last time Melbourne beat the Swans. Nonetheless, I've just got this feeling Melbourne's gonna suddenly turn up this week and probably get the job done. I'm gonna tip them by nine points. Melbet.com is offering over $2 odds for that game as well, so I might back that in. Next up, we have the Magpies and the Doggies at the G on the Friday night. The Pies go into this game with one win and two losses, but can probably count themselves unlucky because their two losses have been against Geelong and West Coast. Geelong and West Coast are probably the two best looking sides at the moment, football wise. They've lost to what's become their bogey side now, the Eagles, but they'll be looking to get some reward this week because they've played fairly okay football to this point. The Dogs, on the other hand, blew a big opportunity to go 3-0 last week. They had impressive wins over the Swans and the Hawks in the opening rounds, but last week were led all day by the Suns and just couldn't catch them. The midfield is starting to perform pretty well with Bont, McRae and Liberatore all having over 30 possessions last week. That being said, this week will prove their biggest test to date. I think the Dogs will put up a gallant fight, but the Magpies will win this by 17 points. This game shapes as a pretty exciting contest between two of the more informed sides of the competition. Geelong host GWS at GMHBA Stadium. To be honest, I'd say that no side has looked better than the Cats so far three rounds in, and I think they're gonna prove very difficult to beat once again down at the Cattery. I just love what the Cats have produced so far this season and are really starting to get a bit of depth to their contributors. Pat Dangerfield also looks dangerously close to returning to his best football with a very outstanding performance last week against the Crows. That's right, very outstanding. The Giants on the other hand have never actually beaten the Cats at the Cattery and have only beaten them once ever in nine attempts. The Giants sort of look like world beaters at home so far and looked pretty impotent, yes, away from home. Although to be fair, their one loss was against the Eagles in Perth. Despite the class oozing out of the Giants, I think this game will be a bridge too far and the Cats will get the job done by 34 points. Next up, we have Essendon hosting the Brisbane Lions at the MCG and this game kind of has me tearing my hair out. The Bombers were really terrible in rounds one and two, but played fairly well last week in round three. So maybe they actually have some confidence to back up their talent. On the other hand, the Lions are probably one of the form sides of the competition at the moment with three wins from three starts. But the question is, how well can they perform at the MCG? These two sides have actually only played each other once at the MCG since the 2001 Grand Final. A lot of this game really depends on which Essendon turns up. I don't like it because I could see this game going either way, but I'm gonna have to tip Brisbane on paper by 19 points. Next up, we have the Power hosting Richmond at the Adelaide Oval. The Power must go into this game pretty satisfied with what they've dished up so far. Yes, they lost a fairly winnable game last week against the Lions at the Gabba, but I actually think it's gonna be very tough for teams to travel up to the Gabba and get wins this year, particularly in night games when it's a bit dewier. I've banged on a lot about Port's youth so far, but the older heads like Travis Boak in particular are really performing. Tom Rockliffe didn't play out the whole game against Brisbane last week due to injury, but I believe he's gonna be fit to play. Admittedly, I'll probably be proven wrong by the time this video comes out. The Tigers, on the other hand, have their rotten luck continuing. I believe Cochin's done a hamstring injury and Martin could probably be suspended for this game. That means the big four of Koch, Rance, Rewalt and Martin all may miss this game. The undermanned Tigers have copped two hidings in a row in recent weeks. As a result, I feel like their confidence must be at a pretty low point. If those players I mentioned do miss, it'll make it all the more harder. Now sometimes players missing does help the team lift. I can see them putting in a gallant performance away from home, but 
Nonetheless, I'm actually gonna tip the power by 22 points. The next game is North hosting the Crows at Marvel Stadium. The Roos go into this game 0-3 and in 17th spot and the pressure has to be mounting on Brad Scott. For a side that's loaded up for a finals tilt, you'd have to say this is a must win game and I'm personally pretty excited for this game. The Roos have now lost three games against sides they probably would have fancied themselves against going into this season. A loss here to the Crows at home would make them 0-4 and, and it'd be hard to see them turning around their season from that. Now Higgins and Cunnington were really good against the Hawks last week, but I feel like as a team they need to find an extra gear. On the other hand, the Crows have had a pretty strange start this season. They've looked pretty poor twice at home with convincing losses and then played a really good game in Sydney to win. I don't think they played bad football last week, I just think the Cats are a very good side. Seedsman's probably going to miss up to at least a month with a knee injury. I don't know how accurate that information was, I read it on Facebook. I believe it's not an ACL, which is good, so hopefully he's back on the park before long. I really can't get a clear read on the Crows so far this year, so that's why I find this game so hard to tip. For some reason I find myself leaning towards North. I think with their backs against the walls, they're going to come out and surprise a few people. I'm going to say North win this by 29 points. And Q hate in the comments. Next up, we have Western Derby 49, and interestingly, it's the first derby under lights for over six years. The Eagles made a real statement last week, going to the MCG and beating the Magpies. They appear to have their mojo back well and truly. Gaff came back with his first game since suspension, obviously, and he had 35 touches, although at times I thought he was a bit scrappy, but he'll be much better for the run, and he'll get a bit of match conditioning from that game, as will Cripps. Dockers, on the other hand, got the job done over a St Kilda side last week, and I thought that game wasn't going to be as close as it was. I thought the Dockers were in control of that game for a little bit longer than the Saints, and evidently they won, but I wonder if getting done over by the Suns the week before has knocked their confidence a bit, because they didn't look like the same side that smashed North Melbourne. The big question for me at this point is the fitness of Nat Fife. He got absolutely knocked the hell out in one of the worst concussions I've seen for a while. Now again, we may already have our answer by the time I actually upload this video, but from where I'm sitting at the moment, surely on a six day break, Nat Fife is not able to play a game of football. I'm not a medical expert, can't examine him. It, it would just be bizarre if he was able to play after six days. I know I'm an Eagles fan and that would help my team if he doesn't play, but seriously. Assuming Fife misses, and I think the home crowd of the Eagles will play a bit of a role. I'm gonna tip the Eagles to win this by 41 points. If Fife played, I definitely think the game was probably gonna be a little bit closer than that. Second last game is Gold Coast Suns hosting Carlton over in Queensland. Now at the start of the year, most would have pegged this as a bit of a wooden spoon clash, but, but so far, bizarrely, the Suns find themselves unlucky not to be three and zip. They're proving a lot of doubters wrong, including myself, and while I think they've been at times really poor with the ball in hand, I've actually admired their spirit and intent and willingness to take the game on. Like I said before, the Blues were a little bit unlucky last week, probably had the chance to win and were very gallant in defeat, but wasted some opportunities. Ed Kerno impressively bobbed up in his brother's absence and kicked four goals, while Pat Cripps was ably supported in the midfield by Mark Murphy and Sam Walsh. If the Blues want to avoid the wooden spoon this year, this game might be a bit of a must win, otherwise there'll be three wins behind the Suns. The Suns have looked better than the Blues, I would say up to this point, but I remember the Blues getting the win up there last year. I'm gonna tip the Blues to win this by 14 points. Final game of the round is the Saints hosting the Hawks at Marvel Stadium on Sunday. Now the Saints, it has to be said, have exceeded my expectations so far this year. They were a bit unconvincing in round one against the Suns and nearly blew the game, but then they had a really good win over Essendon and pushed Fremantle all the way in Perth last week. They definitely don't look like world beaters, but I see the improvement on last year and they're playing with pretty good intent. Like I said, Jack Billings was probably their best player last week and he's one that's really starting to fulfill his potential. If this Saints rebuild is really gonna get off the ground, then Billings is one player who probably has to hit his straps pretty soon. The Hawks, on the other hand, survived a bit of a scare from North Melbourne last week. After their really impressive round one win, the Hawks have looked a little bit uninspiring. Now, Amir is putting in some really consistent form in the midfield and probably hasn't been talked about enough. And while Warple and Scully are going all right, he probably still needs a little bit more support in that midfield. Wingard back at his side does add an important attacking string to their bow. I definitely see him and Luke Bruce forming a very dangerous duo in the months and years to come. I can definitely see the Saints pulling an upset here. And I'm going to say they're going to lead the Hawks, but the Hawks will come back and win by seven points. All right, so that's the entire round of tips. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I encourage you to leave your own tips in the comments below. Unless you're in the competition and don't want to give away your competitive advantage, whatever. All these odds that I've listed in the video so far are odds courtesy of melbet.com. So if you like me and enjoy betting from time to time and you're over 18, check them out. The link is in the description. There is a discount code there as well. As I always say, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. We make all kinds of AFL content. That's it for now, guys. We'll see you next week.